Patricia King has a newsletter that comes out, and she was talking about Cast and Vision for 2014. And she said, in 2014, we're going to see greater breakthroughs. We're going to see greater moves of the power of God. And then the next thing she said scared me because a lot of times in church, we really want to be about the fluff and the excitement and the fun and the love and the ooey gooeyness of it all. The next thing she said was, and commensurate with the move of God, spiritual adversity will also increase. It will also increase. This is, and for some of you, you'll get it. Some of you, you may not. This is how I think about it. This house is a tribe. In my mind, different than community, different than culture, the tribe is unique. The tribe recognizes that each of us have a role, and when we're functioning in that role, the tribe survives. I want to do this, but the tribe needs me to do this, but I want to do this. The tribe needs me to do this. I want to do this, Lord, but I need you here. If my place is here, can I borrow you, Marcus? And Marcus's job is to stand shoulder to shoulder with me, but I have to be here. That's my wife. Yeah. Isn't she wonderful? Yeah, she's awesome. If, if, if our job is to stand, and each one of us is connected shoulder to shoulder to shoulder, and I'm going, but I want to, but I want to stand over here. <laughs> right? Well, if if Marcus moves, then everybody else has has to move. But if the Lord or the advancement of the tribe is for us to go that way and I do this, then I have just hurt the integrity of the line and the tribe can't advance the way that it's supposed to advance. I want to do this. God says I want you to do this or I need you to do this. I want to do this. The tribe needs me to do this. The cool thing is, is that when I take my place and I do what needs to be done because that's the season, that's the time, that's the place, I end up doing this without even trying. Pastor said he gives us the desires of our heart. For I know the plans that I have for you declares the Lord. What kind of plans? Plans of good, not of calamity, to give you a future and a hope. We cast that one out, and I've been really studying that one. And if you go back and you read Jeremiah 29, in its entirety, here's what you will find. The children of Israel were in captivity in Babylon. They were under judgment by God. They were in a pagan 
land. But in the midst of all of that, he says, but I have a plan for you. If you're alive, the plan is still operative. Amen. That's right. The season, and, and I'm not trying, and I'm not standing here trying to give the devil any credit. But being a police officer and working tactical operations and all of those things, rule number one was know your enemy. That's right. I'm not giving him any credit. I wish I would have seen his schemes a little bit earlier today, but I didn't. But that's okay. It's a lesson. Amen. The tribe, our job is always to seek connection with one another. Amen. Yes. Hollis, you make me angry. But you know what? I always want to be connected to you. So you know what that means? I'll figure it out. Yeah, that's right. David, that annoys me. <laughs> Guess what? I want to be connected to you. I'll figure it out. There you go. Good word. We need everyone to be in place. Yep to move where we need to be. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, that's good. Thank you. I'm just going to go jump right into the deep end of the pool. Uh, last night in worship, or it was uh, in uh, prayer, there were some things that the Lord showed me. Um, just wanted to encourage you, if you're on the church's Facebook page, you'll see that I've given some opportunities where you can go and find how to read through the Bible in a year. Uh, what the Lord told me is he, we must get into the Word. It is as it is the Word is as important as the blood in your veins and the air in your lungs. That's the importance of the Word this year. It is in, as important as the blood in your veins and the air in your lungs. So, man, if you have never read bef- the Bible before or you've been lackadaisical about it, this is the year of life that you got to press into. So last night um, during a prayer, we had a good time of prayer, really pressed in. We, we got in the pond over here and, or whatever, the, the, the portal, and we had a good time. It was really, it was really cool, it was, just, it was all over us. And uh, one of the things, and this really, uh, really hammers for today, um, for everybody being uh, kind of pooed on, was that uh, we need to press into the boldness to step into our position. And that was exactly what Tom got. He wasn't even here for prayer last night, but he got, the, he got the message. It takes a real boldness to position ourselves properly, shoulder to shoulder. Um, what will happen when we do that is, see, we're all called to be leaders. Every one of us in here are a leader to one degree or another. And the leadership ability and, and positioning enables the body, okay, that's all of us together, it enables us to feel the freedom of God saying, I like you. And that's really part of the positioning because when we're positioned in our proper place, there's a flow of life, there's a flow of the kingdom. We're moving and projecting, we're looking the same direction. Um, one of the other words that came out last night was the, uh, Queen Esther. When she was going before the king, she stood in the one chamber and waited, looking across to the king's chamber, and he extended the scepter and, and told her to come on in. That's one of the things that we've really stepped into uh, for this year. What I saw, and uh, I, uh, I just wasn't sure if I was supposed to share it, but God said to, um, today is our anniversary. Four years old. We're four years old this week. Um, so, Patty, if you want to take a moment and just put that up. Uh, yeah, go ahead and put the pictures. I'm going to just share real quick before she fires up the music that what I saw was I saw that we were... F- The symbol was a four-year-old little girl in a spring flowery dress with little white sandals on, dancing before the Lord with her arms outstretched like this, just spinning around and dancing. Uh, And 
what the Lord said is he's, he's mindful of us. He said that. But he said the innocence of us in this picture warms his heart. He's, he, our love for him warms his heart. We're at a place of innocence. We had the flowery dress. We're dancing before him. Um, yes, hallelujah. Uh, I want to address real quickly. <laughs> I want to address real quickly keys. Remember I said keys were going to be delivered at midnight. They, they were delivered. And I'll tell you, it was interesting. Uh, if you had some prayer time by yourselves, there were some really cool things that happened. Um, keys, they represent the turning or they are turned to open and close locks, give access, control, or possession to vital elements or set answers to a test. The ability to discern, decipher, or decode a mystery or dream. Hallelujah. That's what keys are about. And I think that's interesting because we talked about the keys. We all jingled them. And then the Lord reminded me of what he said back in September about being a people of access. That was the time we had the, the vision of the big black war horses that God said that he was uh, harnessing together, standing side by side, very similar to what Tom said today. And this is what God spoke over this house. We are a people of access. Mm. We just got the keys for this year. Who open gates and doors, even the ancient doors. We are to clear this quadrant of resistance. Amen. Yes, and ungodly influence. They have to be routed out and rooted out that liberty and victory may be experienced by all in this area, region, and territory. Yeah. He said to re-speak that over ourselves, to remind us, to be mindful of what he has said about us. Make sure I get to the next page. Okay, let me just look. All right, this one's next. Okay, I got it. So that statement that we are called to clear this quadrant of all resistance and ungodly influence, I'm going to ask you to stand with me, if you would, please, because he's asking us to proclaim something this morning. Okay. Put your hand on your heart. Okay? Because this is the seat. This is the seat of who you are. And just repeat this with me. Lord, Lord we, stir we stir our faith, our faith to, engage to engage you. That you, that you would, throw would throw the lever. The lever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's God, our, our, our engagement to him and the stirring of our faith will move him to throw the lever. Okay, you can sit down. The reason why I wanted to say that over yourself, and, and we'll probably get this where you can say it uh, quite often, is you remember the, the word Lord said that there's a mustering for the engagement? And I've said this several times. It really is. That's what this picture is, that we need to stir our faith and engage him so that he will throw this lever. He's gathered and mustered us together to work together in faith, standing side by side, locking arms, facing the same direction, seeing the vision, seeing the purpose laid before us. Then he will throw the lever, which will engage all of the kingdom momentum and release it into where we're supposed to be. And it'll open doors. It'll help us clear the atmosphere. And he will fill when he throws that lever. What it does is it opens heaven. It engages heaven. But it also opens our spirit and the portal above us that we can get a clear download, that we can proclaim what he wants to release in this area, and we will carry it along with him. And we won't get tired, and we won't get swept away. Hallelujah. Wow. Okay, as you can probably tell, I've had a very busy week, a lot of quiet time. So, Patty, if you could start bringing up those things I started, I am being, that was the thing, those little ones on the little piece of paper I showed you, there you go, all right, these are the things that the Lord laid on my heart this week, and I had Patty put them up here because I, I wanted them not only seen, I wanted them heard. I am not afraid of any resistance. 
I am not afraid of anything the enemy dares to open his mouth about because my God speaks a lot louder and has more authority than any lie or any threat that would come. So I am being entrusted with, this is, this, as you pray for me, recognize what has been set before me. That, number one, I will be honest, it's, it is beyond me. It makes me uncomfortable. I don't have a comfort zone anymore, okay? But I, want, I desire and need your intercession and prayers. I thank you for them for that because what's laid before us. I am being entrusted with the responsibility of charting the course for the church of up to 100 people in this season. Don't know how long this season's going to be, but this is what God has entrusted me with. He's challenged me. He's dragging me through a knothole backwards. Um, it's one of the most uncomfortable places I've ever been. But even though it's uncomfortable, I am not afraid of this because I know that it's not my abilities. It's what God has designed, and he's just using me as a tool. I'm nothing more than a hammer to drive home his desires into where it wants to go and where its heart is, okay? The heart of Cornerstone Christian Fellowship is the Father's heart being revealed and manifested and established in us as a people and as a tribe, as a family. Bring me up to the next one. God is directing the positioning of individuals strategically in our tribe family. No one is exempt. Yeah, that may be right, but you may not like it. I'll tell you that right now. Okay? It's right, but you may not like it. But the thing is, as you yield and, and, and give yourself to him wholeheartedly, as he captures you with his love, you will quickly yield to him and it'll be okay but i want you to i'm just i'm just telling you up front i'm not trying to hoodwink you i'm not trying to fool you i'm I'm, this is going to be in your face but there's reason why it's in your face because there's not very many churches out there there's not a group of people very many of them in this area that have the understanding of how to do what we're called to do and if you are sent to this church you will be fine We are designed to do this. That's why you were called to be a part of this family. Okay, bring me the next one. No one is exempt. Hallelujah. Comfort in this arena, and that's the word that God gave me. I was going to say, what? I thought it was area. No, God said, this is an arena. Okay, this is his place of choosing and calling forth the confrontation. That's what the arena is about. It's the confrontation of us destroying the works of the enemy and establishing a bull, a bulwark and a beach, whatever those things are called, where, yes, that, that one, where God's blessing and presence can be established, where people can come in and it will clear the quadrant. So com- com- comfort in this arena is not a given, but rest is possible. Rest is so important. In the midst of the conflict, God says, you off the floor, you in the, into the game. So rest is possible. Don't give up. Don't grow weary in doing good because your time of being called to time out into the bench is coming and somebody else is made to take that spot at that time. Okay? There's no, there's, I mean, when those things happen, no one's being degraded. No one's being this, that, the other thing. No one's being set down on purpose. It's like rest, time out, go rest. Okay? This is what you'll see. Focus is a must, absolutely. Being focused, having the mind of Christ, having your eyes open to what the Spirit is saying is a must in this next year and the things that are set before us. There's there's a lot more clarity you're going to start seeing on this side of the... hmm, Wow. There's a lot more clarity coming your way than you're probably ready for. I'll put it like that. Being ready in the moment is critical. This is where you're so engaged in walking in the Spirit that when this hits you, you immediately go and you make the change. There's going to be that kind of instantaneous obedience and transition, and it's critical that you feel the momentum. What's going to be like, it's going to be as you, you're going to feel this thing coming, and you're going to watch, you're going to see those around you, and then all of a sudden you're all going to feel the urge to move. It's like it's going to move like a group that flying birds. You know when the birds, they do this thing, they fly, everybody's in unison? It's going to move like that. It's critical to be in that moment. Being ready in the moment is critical. Correct mindsets is being established. Correct? Mindset is being established. Mindset, individual, not mindsets. Correct? Mindset. That is the mind of Christ being established in this family, in this body, this tribe, like never before. 
You're going to start having dreams and visions about each other. Reasons why, you're going to have to be covering each other's backs. Okay? When you wake up at 1 or 2 in the morning and you have a, you've been thinking and had a dream about so-and-so, you at that moment say, oh, I understand what's happening, and you go to intercession immediately. This is the sort of thing we're looking at. Take me to the next one, please. Strong, I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. Strong-shouldered team members have arrived and will continue to arrive to be positioned. Those who have been sent will be obvious. You'll know if you've been sent to this house. And you're going to recognize those that are coming. They're strong-shouldered people. Now, I want to be honest with you. When you get a bunch of big stallions and, and war horses in a room, it's not comfortable. Okay? They start bumping into each other. Uh, we're not all fuzzy and warm here because we're made for what we're made to do. We are given and entrusted with the heart's desire of the Father, and he is building us up, and we are all going to look like Tom in the spirit realm real quick, okay? Because, I mean, in the natural, he's gorgeous, man. Raw. All right? You betcha. Yeah, man. He, yeah, you heard that. That's my boy back there. And we're all going to look like that in the spirit. <laughs> the words of edification. So, but you know what? It's going to be obvious. It's going to be obvious with what God's doing. He's bringing people in strong-shouldered. Why? Because this yoke isn't just for me. It's not for just a few people. It is for everybody to engage in. No one is exempt from this. But what's really cool is if all you are meant to do is go out there and make sure the sugar bowl is full, then, you're all, then you've done what you're supposed to do. If you're supposed to come in and make sure the chairs are all straight, then that's, that's great if that's what you're supposed to do. And if you're supposed to come in here and run the entire um, children's ministry or whatever the other ministries that are coming that I'm not allowed to speak about yet, hallelujah, they'll be here. This, is, this place is a multi, where did that go? Where did I put that, Lord? Oh, here it is. This house is called to have a multitude of culture. I don't know what that means yet. This house is called to have a multitude of culture. Waiting on that. that he said that last night during prayer. I went, oh, that's cool. I'll write it down. Don't know when it's going to happen, but I'll get an understanding someday. All right? All right, take me to the next one. Strong-shouldered team members, when we start bumping into each other, love is the most important thing. And we're not going to squish the little guys between us. Little guys will know how to keep out from underneath his feet. I mean, you ever seen baby elephants around a herd? They know exactly where to hide. They hide under them all. Okay? So when, we, the, big, when the big boys start moving and the big girls start moving, the little ones are going to be safe. It's all going to be good. All right. This work is not rooted in What? Yeah, there is no competition. First time that God sees competition, he's going to take and just kind of lance that and shave it off, remove it like a big ugly wart, okay? And then he's going to make sure it's all smooth because this is not about competition. Absolutely, okay? Be at rest. Number one reason why I wanted to tell you that is because if there's anything inside of you about self-promotion, God will not honor that. Please hear my heart. It's not that I don't love you, but I want you to recognize this is not about competition. It's not about your identity. It's about Jesus Christ's identity and being revealed in you. It is about completion of an individual tasks as well as purpose. It's about the completion of the individual. Number one, the individual is all, it's God. It's his plans, his purpose. This is his dream, not my dream. Not my dream at all. But it's his heart's desire and dream. Mm. Take me to the next one, please, honey. The keys delivered for this year at midnight represent wisdom and understanding within the kingdom. That's one of the things. One of the things that he's going to be really doing. The re and, I, and I struggled with that one for a moment. And I said, what do you mean? And then he started giving me the understanding of what, how this training center is going to really start ramping up. Wisdom, understanding. Wisdom, understanding. Okay, take me to the next one. 
There's some powerful keys and open door, doors are going to be open. Powerful things are going to happen. This year will require the harvesting of God's word in our lives at a higher level than before. Remember what I said? It's like the blood in your veins and the air in your lungs. That's how critical the word is. I've given you the tools. Okay, on, on, uh, I think I even sent an email out possibly of how to use and get into, those, uh, into the word every day. I, I pressed it last year. I, I did a little bit the year before, but this year it is really critical. Because as I said, I think I sent it out in an uh, email possibly. It's great to have a gun, but if you have no bullets, it might as well just club people with it. It doesn't work. Okay, it doesn't have the distance. You know, guns shoot bullets that go a long ways. Okay, I'd rather have a bullet that I could shoot a guy at 75 yards and beat him to death when he's on top of me with my gun. Okay, so it's like that with the enemy. God's word in your mouth is a bullet, and you fire it and proclaim it, and it destroys and does the work it's sent to do. So get that word in you like never before. Take me to the next one, please. That's it. Hallelujah. Good. Wow. Okay, let me see. That, that was that one. That was that one. That's this one. Make sure I get it all down. Da da da. Okay, that's good. All right. Now, get to this sticky note. The message title today <laughs> is Charting Our Course for 2014. With all that being said, I just set the stage. It took me 15 minutes. Man, I got a lot to get done. But God is good, amen? amen? All right, so we talked about throwing the lever. The Lord would throw the lever. Uh, charting our course is all about engaging it. It really is about you as individuals all together corporately engaging what God has. Mm, okay. Good, good. Okay. One of the first things you're going to see happens next week. The 12th at 3 o'clock. Tom Benj, my spiritual son... Okay, I, the Lord laid on my heart back in, in October that this was what was coming. He also said some things about positioning people and, and his heart's desire and the fire that they were going to go through. Okay, and I'm just, I'm just I'm going to, because I'm transparent and because this is how family really is, it talks about business at, this, at the dinner table. We're in the presence of the Father at his dinner table right now. I want to tell you. Tom and Nicole are being brought forward. Tom is stepping in the position of associate pastor. When I started looking at this in October, I said, Lord, uh, I know what fire comes when you step into a, what, uh, the blessing and calling of a life, especially when you go to this magnitude. I know it gets ugly real quick, and it burns off a whole lot of flesh. It stinks. It doesn't look good. We kind of look like zombies. We're half burned up. We're just not quite dead. We're not sure what we are. We haven't got our true identity on yet. And who we are in Christ hasn't truly been revealed. So that was, what, that was my conversation with Dad about Tom. And I haven't told Tom any of this. So if he turns red, that's okay. So there you go. So he can smell it. He knows what it's like. So we're setting Tom in on the 12th at 3 o'clock. Now, the reason why, and I, you know, the Lord said the 12th at 3 o'clock. I said, okay, I, I wrote it down. And then he, and I, I talked, I just kind of threw it out there. Then the Lord said, there's specific reasons why I chose those. I said, okay, fine. So I went and I dug out my books, Understanding Numbers. And the 12th represents the elect purpose of God. There's a lot of momentum on this thing, putting Tom in like this. And I didn't really realize it until we sat down and, and God and I talked about it. So this being done to Tom is God's elect purpose for Tom and Nicole's and the family's life, this family as well, this tribe. It represents and speaks of apostolic fullness and divine governmental rule in this tribe, this church. The three, at three o'clock is when it's going to happen, it is the perfect witness. God is making sure that we understand that this is his heart's desire for this house and for Tom and Nicole and the girls' lives. It is a testimony of union, of union and oneness. It is God's approval, completeness, and divine perfection. And I was like, wow, man, God's all over this. 
I just thought I chose a day and an hour because it was convenient. God says, that's all right. He likes to make me out that way sometimes. So I went, okay, thank you, Lord. We're going to have a few guest people coming up. And I'm waiting for some other, I, I sent out some notes and things, and it's going to be a really wonderful time. So we want to make sure we honor uh, what God is doing. One of the things you're going to see this year is number one. Um, let me just make sure. Da, da, da. Yes, that's right. Okay. Patty, if you could bring up the hosting the presence video. This is where we're, God has said we're going to, the, the Cornerstone Training Center is going to take off this year. And he's going to really start downloading and equipping this body to do what we've been called to do so that we are secure and feel safe in what we are stepping into. Oh, okay, hold that video for a second. What God also said since I was dealing with Tom and Nicole and the girls and Marcus and Hollis, you know, they're, I'm, I'm slowly getting identity and understanding delivered to them. I, shed, I sent an email off of how their callings as steward of the house works. Okay, and I gave that to personally, and that's just personal for them. Kevin and Kathy are stepping up into a, a, a ministry of watching the gate, and, uh, and God put that on my heart. And he started talking to me about that back in October. And what was really interesting, if you saw on Facebook, I shared uh, John Eckhart's uh, challenge to the pastors this year of making sure who's watching the gate because he said the, the people that watch the gate have to have the heart of the family and the pastor. And I know these people here have my heart. I know they've got my back. I know that since I've spoken this into their life, the same fire that came at Tom is coming at them. So I ask you to cover these families as they step into the position, not that I've said to do, but that God's called them to. It's not pleasant. It is not an arena of comfort at all. But it is what God's desire and call on the life is. And, and, and what's, really, what's going to be for us, okay, is that when the fire comes, we hang on to each other. I'm looking at you, all of you. When fire comes, we hang on to each other because that's when every, you know, what happens when you catch fire? You want to run. How hard is it to stop, drop, and roll? Okay? Stop. Stand still in the presence of the Lord. Drop on your knees and roll with what God's doing, and not you know, and put let Him put the fire out. I, I, I. It is not easy for me to do this, but I am being obedient to what God has said because He has entrusted you with what you've been done here. Okay, it's not easy. It's not comfortable, but I know you guys have been around me long enough. You understand. You've got the heart. Okay. When you when people start hitting fire, I'm hanging on to you. We're all going to hang on to you. Okay. It's not going to be easy. But I'll tell you, the glory of God in this place and in our lives is worth everything that I've died for. And I'm not dead yet. I've got more dying to do. But you know what? If it brings God's glory into this house, I'll die all I can. You can take every ounce out of every cell I've got that I'm totally dead, and Jesus is the only thing you get to see. Because I want, I want his glory in this house like nothing else. Why? Because there's people that are desperate for it. Desperate for it. Now, what that means is you're going to see a lot of transition for three, almost four, well, for, yeah, for a long time. You've seen me hold this pulpit. This year, God said, I'm bringing people in, and you're going to plug them in. You're going to be hearing a lot more voices in this pulpit from within us, okay? In whatever level of ability or comfort they can find. That goes from myself all the way down as God opens the doors, okay? So be ready for that and honor each other when those moments come. Okay, I don't know. I, I, at this point, I'm looking at Tom, Marcus and Hollis, and Tom and Nicole, and Kevin and Kathy. You know, and we're, and we're just kind of working out to see who else God has. Okay, because there's there's going to be there's there's a movement where this is not my thing. This is our thing, where we all stand shoulder to shoulder and we all live this out together. Okay, this is probably different than you've probably seen around town in church. Okay. But I trust this is the God's heart, and he's going to put things in you that he will draw on. Amen? 
So be comfortable about that. If, if, if it's your thing, uh, if your name comes up and before the Lord and before me, and I say, hey, if nothing else, just step up and do the prayer in the morning. Man, I know you'll pray heaven in here, and man, we'll be on the floor, and the, the Shekinah glory will come out. That's what I'm talking about. So just, I just wanted to put that out there. So, okay, now I'm ready for hosting the, hosting the presence, if you bring that up. This is the first installment of the Cornerstone Training Center. God's excited about this, and it's going to position us precisely for where we're going. We're starting that today. We started it when we were worshiping. That you're my heart's desire. This will be the natural normal, the new normal that we walk in in this house. The innocence of his presence pressing in. Even when we don't feel like it, we press in. All right, so hosting the presence, Bill Johnson's going to be the first thing when we start engaging Cornerstone Training Center. It's exciting to see this all going on. Let's see. Let me get down here. The workbooks and everything are here. They're back there. If you need, if you've paid for yours and everything, Patty will have those after, after, cla- uh, after service this morning. So this year we... Uh, we require the harvesting of God's word in our lives as never before. Um, Engage in Cornerstone will be hosting the presence of Bill Johnson. The second one, Tom will be taking the reins on that. Hallelujah. We're going to set Tom in. You know, Tom is a, is a I, I, I would say he would definitely fulfill the fivefold ministry as teacher. But also, there's other things that God has put in him as, as pastor and other wisdom things. But we're going to engage him. He's going to be doing uh, what Pastor Randy had was Foundations of Victory. And it was like, what, 26 weeks or something? And, and Tom said, hey, we can condense this down to what? Eight weeks. So we can nail that thing out of the park. Because it's really important with what God's doing positionally and strengthening and building our base is, number one, we're hosting the presence Okay, that's good. That's all about the spiritual woo-woo, ha-ha. Okay, and then foundations of victory, bam, bringing in the word. So you have the, just as Tom's built to bring this, the spirit and the word and keep them balanced, that's what we're doing. We're bringing in the spiritual understanding of, of hosting his presence, and then Tom's going to be delivering this teaching on the foundations of victory, which is all about having the word and walking it out. And that really excites me. We're going to, this is uh, open for anybody. It doesn't have to be just this church. We're going to have, we've already had people that are outside this church coming in for this one. So hallelujah. We, this church is not normal. It's God's heart, okay? Yes, it's not normal. We're going to be, this is an umbrella kind of a canopy thing where people will come in from other churches to get equipped and go out and we say hallelujah, okay? This is a training center. This is about equipping the saints. It's training, equipping, and activating the saints. That's what that part of the God's dream for this place is. All right, and then what's really exciting, um, a dear old friend of ours from way back at the Vineyard Church back in the 80s, Linda Brightman. Okay, if you all remember her, I I emailed her, I actually Facebooked her, and, and told her some of the families that are in our circle. And she was very happy to hear who was in my circle of uh, my leadership circle, the, my family here. So she wanted to say hello to all of you. I want to show you quickly. Um, this is the, the curriculum that she has written. Uh, it's really a blessing. Um, it's called The Real You Manifesting Kingdom Identity Activation Manual and the book and the DVD series. Now, what's really cool is Linda has really gone out and done some really awesome stuff. And she actually has in her forwards here are a forward by, does anybody know Graham Cook? <laughs> How about Bill Yaunt? Both of these are writing, have written about these books. And they're in the forward. So we have, I mean, because of God's connections across the years, we have the privilege of grabbing a hold of this and getting this into our body and whoever else wants to be here. Um, it's about who we are in Christ and really ramping it up. Um, let me see. Yeah, go ahead and do the video for me. There's, there's, uh, we're gonna have the, there's a DVD series that goes with this training, and uh, I'm honored to have gotten a hold of Linda, and, and she's going to be very helpful with this. If I could ask one question, whether you're a new believer in Christ or a ministry leader, This is what my question would be. If I could crawl inside your mind for 24 hours, would I have a good day? Mm. 
most people are horrified at the thought of somebody listening in on their thought life. So how about you? Do you wrestle with negative thoughts, limiting mindsets, depression or fear or shame? It's time for you to fully embrace your true identity, the real you. You know what? You have an outrageous identity. Amen. You're not supposed to be conformed to the world. You're not supposed to be like the world. Right now, right here, you are being transformed into the likeness of Christ. Yes. You have an outrageous identity. You are radically loved, totally accepted, and completely forgiven. Amen. It's time to finally break the stronghold of fear and shame and get a hold of who God says you really are. And finally, be totally free. Amen. You can live a life in agreement with heaven and your thoughts can be totally aligned with God. I'm Linda Brightman and I've written a book called The Real You, Believing Your True Identity. It's a high level identity training and it will change your mindsets, it will launch you into your destiny, and you will finally see yourself through God's eyes. Yes. It's in your spiritual DNA to be a portal, a gate through which heaven flows <laughs> on earth. Amen. This book provides interactive tools to transform your thought life and pull you into a supernatural partnership with God. The real you, Believing Your True Identity is available at lindabrightman.com. We've, we've been extended great favor. I was, I was talking to Linda, and she says, uh, we'll be doing this. I'm not sure exactly the timing. We'll, um, I'm waiting on the Lord on the timing. We're going to do that this year. But she's given us, uh, she will give us a great discount when it's time to order the books. So that's really favor on top of that. So we're gonna, it's a DVD series. I think she said there's uh, three DVDs with like 11, 15-minute segments on the DVD, and we work out the workbook and stuff. So we're going to be doing that this year as well. So you can see we're really ramping up the training center. It is so important to God's heart to get his people, not just this family here, this tribe, but all the people that are hungry fed in this. And we're going to see this thing really open up this year. I'm believing for a lot of, a lot of stuff so um, my heart is for you to continually please keep me bathed in prayer that I can continue to step into the boldness of what God's called me to do. And I know that my, you know, my flesh is my flesh. It is going to burn and die anyhow. And I want to make sure that no one on my watch misses what they're supposed to have. And I will do everything I know how to to make sure you're there to get what you need. So um, there are some things that are laid before me. Uh, that I'm looking at, where what the heart's desire for, and I talked to R uh, Rodney when he was here. We're having some connections we're doing with Rodney. What I'm, my heart's desire, and I don't know how this is going to work yet. I'm just throwing it out there because this is this is proclaiming and prophesying. I guess you could say, is that we want to set up a Skype type. Uh, situation with the Cornerstone Training Center where we can get a hold of people that Rodney can bring us in connection with. Instead of paying thousands of dollars to bring him here, we pay him a couple hundred and we Skype him in for training. So with that being said, uh, I am praying for a sponsor for the internet access for this building to help establish the Skype-style connection in this room and then the training center. So if the Lord lays that on your heart, talk to us. We haven't done any research on this. This is just the first thing that God threw in my lap. He says, go find out about this. So I have to figure out you know, uh, how that works. So I'll be you know, resourcing some folks to try to do some searching for that. Um, also this year, we're going to be engaging with Eagle Mountain Fellowship to a higher degree. Um, we have uh, unbelievable favor and privilege of being connected with them in ministry. Uh, and instead of reinventing the wheel here, we, we have access to go down and do stuff with their training and things like that until we get ours in the fullness of swing there. So we're going to be, uh, I'll be talking with Bobby uh, and seeing how we can make sure we don't miss any opportunities when they start doing things. Um, that's pretty exciting. 
Uh, Bobby carries a, a real apostolic call in this region and territory. And uh, yeah, hallelujah. We've been a, kind of adopted and, and allowed to come alongside. Whew. Is there anything else? I think that's a pretty full meal deal. What do you think? Do you see a, a good future this next year? Yes, yeah. There's a lot. Yes, Marcus. Yes. You betcha. Come on up here, Marcus. Yes, Marcus. Hallelujah. Yes, give him a hand. There you go. You're ready to go. I had a what I thought was just a real simple word to me this morning. But it's been confirmed over and over and over today already. It started when Tom stood up here and spoke, and Mike has made mention of it a number of times. But I just felt like I needed, and, I, and Mike said it almost the way I'm going to say it, but I felt like I needed to say it again yes. so Amen. that everyone up here could hear it. Yes. Tom brings special skills and abilities mm -hmm. to augment what Mike provides for us. Yes. I need Tom's skills and abilities. That's right. I bring some special skills and abilities that each of you needs. Yes. But guess what? Each and every one of you has a skill, an ability, a call, a mantle, yes. an action that I need and it doesn't matter how good I am, without everything that all of you have, I can't perform to my best. Yes. I need every single, I need, I need every single one of you. Amen. And I just thought you needed to hear that. Amen. I need every one of you. Yeah. Amen. Good word. Good word. Yes, it does. We all need each other. Thank you, Marcus. Give him a hand. Yes, we're good. Yep, Tom's ripping it up up here. So um, <clears throat> some of you know that I've been studying. I, I like the whole Spartan culture thing, and, and, and the Lord's really given me some spiritual insights of the whole thing. So in battle, the Spartans carried a sword. They wore breastplates. They wore helmets. They wore greaves. That was part of their battle array. That was their armament. You lose your helmet, they didn't care about. You lose your breastplate, they didn't care about. It, excusable. Dropped your sword. They didn't care. If you dropped your shield, it was an inexcusable offense, punishable by complete loss of citizenship. The helmet, the breastplate, and the shield were carried for the individual warrior's protection. Yes. The shield was carried for the line. Mm-hmm. I raise my shield, not for me. That's right. Yep. Yeah, get on that side. My shield protects Marcus. Yep. Yes. His shield protects me. And this is how we fight. Yep. Your shield is not for you. It's for the person standing beside you. When you got up and talked about Ephesians, I was like, holy smokes, because I was reading the armor. The armor. And we, we go, uh, Paul uses two verbs when he talks about the armor. Put and take. Certain armor we should always be in. Yes, yes. When I was a police officer, I put on my uniform every day for work. 
I was always in my uniform. My gun, my OC, my baton, my pepper spray, those were tools that I took based on the task. Take up the shield of faith. In the line, we need you to take up your shield because my life may depend on you doing your part. That's right. Yes. I mean, don't run off. You stay up here. Just turn it off. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close with this. This is the charter that God dropped in my lap, in Tom's lap, on September 1st of 2013. He was speaking it for this year. I saw a cloud come from the east and billow above uh, our church. Out of the cloud descended a silver ink well with a hand holding a quill pen. The quill was dipped into the silver ink well and began to write a message in an unknown script. And I saw this happening right over top of us. The ink which, uh, which spelled out this message burst into flame the instant it emerged from the quill's tip and it blazed blue and green. The ink looked like mercury with the color of silver chrome. The impression I received was that this was a release of God's proclamation over us written by his own hand. The message or impressed interpretation was that we were an equipping station and our charter was being delivered. That's what I saw. And then, Tom, this is what you said. So if you would read this for me. It goes there over to here. Okay. The premise is that this house was founded upon rest, refreshing, and restoration. We've often said that this would be a hospital, that it, we would come and get better, that the wounded would come and get better, and we would do all of those things. I believe this is true of the charter of who we are. I believe that people will come in here and get better. This house is becoming something else. It is becoming the Ludus. The Ludus was a house that was specifically for the training of gladiators. And the Lord said, this house is becoming a spiritual Ludus. What I'm going to do is forge in you an understanding of who I am in my faithfulness so that you will be able to wield it in a special way. He has placed Pastor Mike in the role of Doctori Orlanista, who is the chief training officer of the gladiators. The Lanista was the person who owned the house that the gladiators trained in. Houses were elevated based on how well their gladiatorial group was. He's doing something special. Yes, we're going to heal you. We're going to make you better. We're going to bring people in, and they're going to get well. And then we're going to teach you how to fight. Yes, hallelujah. Fight the good fight of faith. Any fight is violent. We are being trained for war. That's what happens. This is a ludus. You are being trained to battle. That's right. When you walk out of here, remember this moment. Remember God's faithfulness to all of us in this moment. Because when we go out, Satan will be like, really? Did you get that? Do you really get that? Or was it from your mind? That's right. So you guys are all being raised as gladiators. And I think it's really cool that we have someone like Pastor Mike to serve as Lanista of the house who lives before us authentically all the time and is willing to admit that he makes mistakes occasionally. This is a journey until Jesus comes back. Yes. We're going to be in this fight. That's right. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Tom. Yes. So, hallelujah. This is what God said over this house. A charter is a statement of rights and responsibilities, a formal written statement describing the rights and responsibilities of a state and its citizens. God wrote this over us with his own hand. It's a formal document of incorporation, a formal document incorporating an organization, company, or educational institution. That's the charter, I believe, is part of this house and the Cornerstone Training Center is what we are. It's what we will naturally live out and experience in this place. This is his dream. A charter is the grant of authority or rights stating that the grantor, who is God, formally recognizes the prerogative of the recipients, who are us, to exercise the rights specified. It is a choice. He has laid this opportunity upon us and before us. It is our choice to step into it. I'm going to step into it. I believe many of us have a heart to do the same. Amen? Amen. 
it is implicit is it, oh I'm sorry it is implicit that the grantor who is God retains superior or sovereignty over this and that the recipient who is us admits a limited or inferior status within the relationship hey I know I'm not the smartest guy around I know that my strength is nothing compared to God's this is his dream his desire he's going to fulfill it and we, he's going to allow us to come alongside and engage and be infused by his dream so as recipients, we recognize our inferior position, but it's all about God anyhow. He's the one that's going to make this happen. Hallelujah. Thank God it's not me. So it is within the sense that charters are historically granted that this sense is retained in modern usage of term. So in other words, folks, he has laid this before us. He is bringing strong-shouldered members into this house to carry his dream. He will infuse it in us as we soak and seek the secret place, as we set, as Tom set us up, the positioned us for power, for this presence, starts at the altar. We go to the secret place. We walk in the wilderness, and we set at the table. This is what God has laid before us. This is the vision for this next year, that we're, this year that we're stepping into. If you desire to do that, I would ask you to stand because I'm asking you to stand shoulder to shoulder with me because I cannot do this and God has not called me to do this by myself. He's allowing and he wants to infuse you with his vision. So Father, we stand before you now and before your dream and vision, your purpose, and we say take us. We are willing as your servants to step into your heart's desire to see it fulfilled. And we take up the faith, we stir our faith to engage you, that you would throw the lever and say yes and engage this and release your kingdom upon the earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that we would see the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, fully equipped for every good work. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Give the Lord a hand. Oh, yeah, Tom, come on up. Yes. There you go. Turn it on. Lord just keeps hitting me with stuff. Good. So um, I get as much from you as you get from me. Hallelujah. Yes, that's good. And Marcus said this, and I think it's for the body. He said this to me one day. We're talking about fighting. Mm -hmm. And he came to me and he said, I want you to understand this. We do not fight to victory. We fight from victory. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. And that was a word Marcus Gave it to me, but I think it's for all of us. Yes. As you fight, you should be giggling inside going, dude, you're wasting your time. <laughs> <laughs> I've already beat you. Amen. You're already beat. Amen. We yes. fight from victory, not to victory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're good, Tom. All right. If, uh, it's, it's time for uh, fellowship time, so we just want to thank the Lord. Father, I thank you for the time today. I thank you for your vision. I thank you for what we talked about. And number one, I thank you for coming to spend time with us. You are our heart's desire. You are our heart's desire. We honor you with all that we are. And Father, as we go into fellowship, I thank you that you have blessed the food already, that the fellowship is divine and sweet, and you continue to knit our hearts together and break down walls and, and wash us, clean us. And Lord, that you would be honored and glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. All right. All right, if you need to, uh, I would suggest those chairs on that back wall in front of the camera, grab those chairs and take them next door, and then uh, we go for it and have a good time eating. Amen.